Okay, so let's get started. I'm Eric Bowman from Sunday National Labs, and this is part two of our mini symposium on the parallel linear solvers. I apologize for the cancellation, but uh, we're now ready with the second talk, so thanks for staying. So our next speaker is Stephen Thomas from NREL, and he's going to talk about asynchronous Jacobi Richardson and gauss adel smoothers um, using Hyper. Well, thanks again to Eric and to the organizers, and really want to thank uh, all the collaborators who are here. Um, this work involves um, both um, the team at Livermore, Hyper, and Ulrike, and Rob, and Rupeng who are here, and also uh, work with Sandia Labs, and in particular Ishii. Uh, we added Ishii Yamazaki as a co-author um, because he has really helped out quite a bit with uh, looking at uh, the two-stage nested iterations that I'll talk about. Uh, this is a talk about preconditioners and, and smoothers, and how uh, we're really looking for high performance on GPUs. So in the context of the work is that at NREL and with Sandia, we're collaborating on the Nala Win project. So very high resolution, very large scale uh, Navier-Stokes simulations of airflow around wind turbines, and in particular, we're interested in the formation of wake vortices behind the turbines. So in order to capture the fluid mechanics of uh, a field of wind turbines, we're looking at on the order of 100 billion grid cells in a simulation. So we, we really need exas exascale class computers to even attempt these simulations. And our focus in, well, certainly over the last year and at Livermore and at Sandia as well is on GPU implementations of the solver stacks, which is the focus of, of this uh, mini symposium. Uh, I'm going to go into more, uh, much more detail about um, the GMRS solvers. Beyond, uh, I'll try not to go beyond what Kasia and Ishii have talked about, but I, I want to um, talk about asynchronous methods, and in that context, um, one reduce implementations of flexible GMRS. If, you're, if we're going to go with an asynchronous preconditioner or smoother, then we want to have, uh, we, we, that implies variable preconditioning and we need an FGMRS Krylov solver. So this is, this is the broader context of the simulations that we're having to do on Summit, uh, um, at Oak Ridge in particular. Well, I, we're, we're interested in wake vortices. I, I thought there was a nice analogy between Formula One racing um, and going fast on supercomputers. Uh, one of my friends once said that uh, he, he equated driving a Formula One race car at 200 miles an hour with getting performance out of a supercomputer. It really is, really requires a lot of skill. And you also see the wake vortices that we're studying in, uh, with wind turbines coming off the back wing of a Formula One race car. So I think it's a very good analogy in that um, there's no doubt that the Formula One teams are also performing sim very similar simulations uh, to what we're doing. Uh, so I, th I thought I would bring that up, but also it requires a team of, of amazing researchers. I'm, I'm, I feel blessed to be working with um, all of you, and um, when you look at Formula One racing, they're pushing the envelope uh, in technology, and I think we're doing the same here. Uh, to be able to have these solver stacks run on, uh, at these speeds on a machine like Summit is quite an incredible achievement, so uh, I just want to recognize all of your work in this area. It's tremendous. Um, related talks during um, SIAM PP this week uh, inc include Ishii's um, presentation the other day, Rupeng, we're working closely with on assembly and, and hyper in general, trying to integrate some of these techniques into hyper. Um, I'll mention Dan, um, Daniel's talk today, that's a, our collaboration with Julian Landrieu at, at CU Denver, 
and he's applying some of the ideas to eigenvalues problems. Okay, so over the course of the past year or two, we've been looking at so-called one reduce or one sync implementations of GM res, and today I'll, I'll briefly bring up uh, or present the one reduce variant of flexible GM res and indicate what was required to reduce the communication or uh, uh, in, in that algorithm as well. My primary focus today though is on the smoothers that can be used uh, certainly in both Trillinos and I've implemented them in Hyper but Ishii has also been looking at, at Trillinos so we'll present uh, the results he's obtained. I also want to mention beyond uh, the two stage or nested iterations, I also want to mention by conjugation. In effect, it's a Gram-Schmidt uh, oblique projection algorithm and, and we have an implementation of it. The difficulty there is setup time and in the context of wind turbine simulations, we're constantly recomputing the preconditioners and the entire V cycle and therefore, um, if we're going to do a little more work in that area, we'd like to be able to reduce the setup costs in something like a, a biconjugation algorithm. However, we have some new ideas on how uh, to do dropping there as well. I also want to, want to go back, to, um, because of the one reduce ideas, to mention the seminal papers of, of Professor Saad, who is, is here, and also uh, Miro Roslaznik, is attending this meeting. Just the fundamental work on backward stability from uh, Chris Page and, uh, and Miro and Strakos. And then um, the FGM res paper uh, back in 1992. So we're, basically we're slightly modifying these results, slightly modifying that algorithm to allow for a one reduce variant. So how do we do that? Well, the basic idea is we're we're taking Arnoldi QR, and I think Daniel's going to go into a lot more detail um, in the talk after mine, but um, we're go we've gone back to the basic Gram-Schmidt uh, formulation and analysis of Bjork dating back to 1967 and found a way to, or, or basically this was observed by Bjork, but found a way to see the projections in terms of compact Y and inverse compact Y forms of the, of the projections. And in a way this unifies or, or completes, if you will, um, the notion that both Householder and Modified and Classical Gram-Schmidt all have a compact Y form. And uh, Rob Schreiber is here, I know, uh, would note that going back to um, the Householder Compact Y form in the late 80s that uh, Schreiber and Van Loon uh, originally defined. So in a sense, we've, we've come full circle in, in linear algebra and we now have uh, this inverse Compact Y form which is the one sync uh, GM res. And I think really it was Homer Walker's work um, on Householder for GM res where he actually superseded or anticipated the Compact Y form by recognizing that you could represent the application of householder um, matrices in terms of a lower triangular solve. In his classic paper, it's really worth revisiting um, householder um, GM res and Homer Walker's work. So more recently, what we've done is we also have a um, classic, a reorthogonalization um, classical Cram Schmidt without iteration. So in other words, uh, we have a form of the algorithm where you can basically on the fly or recursively do the reorthogonalization through a correction uh, and a little a additional work, but it's also one synchronization. So Daniel will go, go into much more detail about that, but just to say that a one sync, the one sync idea applies more broadly not only to MGS GM res, but also uh, classical Gram-Schmidt with reorthogonalization. All right, so just to take note of that, that we can also do a one sync variant of flexible GM res, and again, we're using the inverse compact Y form, a lower triangular solve, but because in flexible GM res there's an additional or a auxiliary space 
spanned by um, the matrix Z appearing in, in the second line here. Um, so in other words, the, the usual Arnoldi representation or factorization that you see in the top line, um, in order to account for a variable or preconditioner, uh, we introduce the Z, the, uh, the Z matrix, pardon me, that's the, my Canadian coming out. Um, so we have AZ equals VH is the Arnoldi fa uh, equivalent of the Arnoldi factorization here. So we can again do an inverse compact Y with a lower triangular solve, but we also have a delayed or lag normalization for the H matrix. Therefore, to modify flexible GM res for one sink, one reduce, we also need to normalize in a delayed fashion uh, the columns of, of Z. So really, really at, at that point we can say, well, FGM res, GM res in, in its different forms can all be reduced to a one reduce, they can all be formulated in a one reduce uh, fashion, which is nice. And they can be pipelined, you can apply the S-step ideas, but for the basic orthogonalization, we only need the one global reduction. So how do we make use of this in the solver stacks? Well, we're, we're faced with um, basically preconditioners and smoothers that are relying on the traditional, um, let's say, uh, recurrences or sparse triangular solves. They may not be explicitly coded or formulated in, in terms of sparse triangular solve, but um, that's, that's the bottleneck on GPUs. So how do we break this bottleneck? How do we obtain the, the type of performance uh, and time to solution that we're interested in? Well, we, we can appeal to um, so-called nested iterations and, well, in the work of Fromer and, and Daniel Shield, also Edmund Chow's work in particular with um, the team um, at Tennessee. So going back a few years now, um, uh, where, uh, and several people in the audience looking at um, iterating for solving sparse triangular or, or lower triangular or upper triangular systems. So what we did was just try and build on this in the context of um, Gauss-Seidel and symmetric Gauss-Seidel. So what we've done is for the triangular solves, we replace those by a, Rich, a Jacoby Richardson iteration. And the asynchronous uh, aspect of, of these iterations is that if you look at equation two, the Jacoby Richardson iteration, we can do that row wise asynchronously and therefore greedily use any updated um, element of the y vector as it becomes available. So that's how asynchronous and, and, and synchronous differ from each other. And this can be implemented with an atomic lock, for example. So as variables are updated or as elements of the vector are updated, we grab them with a lock and apply the Richardson iteration row-wise. Synchronous waits until all the elements of Y are, are available. So that's the essential difference and, and certainly Edmund's work has explored this and asynchronous iterations date back to the late 60s, the, some of the early papers. So um, I, I think Edmund has done the the most work in updating the convergence analysis in particular of these methods. So we're also interested in how these perform on GPUs. So our main interest is can we compare asynchronous with synchronous, but also we're interested in how we might organize the GPU kernels to best affect in combination with the nested iterations. So there is some method to my madness here that we, we are targeting with the nested iterations um, hyper in particular. So the inner nested iteration naturally um, works well, let's say, with hyper's conception of the diagonal and off-diagonal block matrices, matrices that are um, stored separately on each rank, each MPI rank in hyper. So the inner iterations that we're describing here are basically doing a damped Jacobi-Richardson iteration for those triangular systems, but 
they're leaving out the off-diagonal block in hyper. And in doing that, I've added some damping. So the, the best results are with a damping factor of typically 0.8 if, if we just leave out the off-diagonal block in hyper. So our results are, are using almost uniformly, or are uniformly with a omega 0.8. And we're doing this, again, um, because we want to go much faster than the, the sparse triangular solve. So typically we expect from, say, coup sparse or a, a hand-coded kernel uh, for um, the MATVEC to be on the order of 10 times faster than the triangular solves. There's just not a lot of parallelism available. Um, check. check I don't go too long here. Um, and by that, I mean, there's, the, there's been a great deal of work, and in particular, I want to, we're going to compare, and I want to cite the work of Brian Kelly and Siva, who have been drilling down on multicolor gauss seidel and clustered gauss seidel at Sandia. And um, it's, there's certainly, I mean, there's more parallelism in, that's exposed with coloring or clustering. In the case of coloring, that can somewhat increase the number of GM res iterations. The optimal orderings uh, were described by Howard Ellman um, more than a decade ago, where you would optimally have a relaxation order that's oriented in the flow direction for convection-dominated flows. But for parallel, for parallel computation, there's somewhat of a compromise. So we're just going, we haven't done anything other than implement the, the solves as, as iterations. Well, let's present some results. These are from Ishii, and this is using a, a mini-app from Trilinos. So just looking at a single solve of the momentum matrix from uh, Nala Wind. So this is the McAllister blade problem that, that some of you have used or uh, in, in work that's been pr presented here. Uh, it's a 3 million, 3.2 million dimension matrix. And what we found was that we see a significant speed up on a single GPU using symmetric gauss seidel and then nested with a Jacoby Richardson iteration. So this is on a Laplacian. It's only a one level. It's not multi-grid. It's just a one level preconditioner. Uh, but surprisingly, we're seeing uh, you know, like almost a 40% difference in speed. So based on that, we went back to Nalu Wind. And that, so what I'll show you next are the full up model runs for the McAllister blade problem. And this is with Navier-Stokes and with Hyper. Oh, oh sorry, first, um, first we compared Gauss-Seidel and symmetric Gauss-Seidel. So with symmetric Gauss-Seidel um, on the McAllister problem, not the Laplacian, um, we're seeing about a, well, one point, so, well, I'm claiming 1.75 times faster just based on these timings. So th these timings are uh, a GMRS solve with an SGS preconditioner with clustered and multi-threaded on GPU compared with the nested iteration. So we see quite a, quite a speed up. In the case of gauss seidel well, not quite as much. Instead of two tri uh, triangular systems to solve on GPU, we have just one per iteration. And yet we're seeing still about a 1.35 speed up. Very encouraging. And here's the full up simulation. So what I did here, um, I'm, I'm basically bundling everything into one slide. So this is on CPU, this is hyper being used as a solver stack with Nalu Wind with the full Navier-Stokes. So Hyper is providing the preconditioner for momentum, one level, and we're comparing, not quite apples to apples, but more like apples to oranges, we're comparing symmetric Gauss-Seidel in Hyper uh, versus a two-stage Gauss-Seidel with Jacoby Richardson, and the model integration time is reduced at least 10% on CPU. So this is very encouraging, just uh, we still will run the model on CPU, so um, that's quite encouraging. So I, it basically is summarizing that the speed up, even on CPU, with a few more flops and the smoother, is, we're still getting a 10% improvement in the model um, runtime. On GPU, um, 
we're very pleased with the results. These were presented last week, um, and basically it's all the work of Kasha uh, that she's done recently to get all of this onto Summit and also onto our Eagle supercomputer at NREL. So on a single plot we have on the blue line, the momentum solves time per GM res iteration. This isn't solve time, but a single uh, GM res iteration with the nested uh, preconditioner smoother. The red line is um, the pressure solver with Hyper's uh, V-cycle, it's Hyper Multigrid. And that too has the nested iteration as the smoother. And as you can see, they're both scaling uh, linearly and we have very low time. So we're on the order of 0 0.01 seconds per GM res iteration on, on a V100 GPU. So again, this we're not looking at the individual um, times within the smoother preconditioner, we're looking at time per iteration of GM res. Okay, so I, I wanna move on, I'm almost out of time, so I wanna move on and, and just briefly note a couple of things. Um, we, th we think we could effectively use uh, biconjugation as a way of building smoothers. So this is the work dating back to Benzi Tuma, and the AN, A inverse or sparse approximate inverse um, factorization, it's basically creating something that looks like the inverse of an LDU factorization. We've slightly updated it to include dropping. So in other words, the idea is that we can take the original Benzi Tuma algorithm, and uh, this was an idea from Cassia to write um, the update of the W factor in terms of a rank one update. And if you do that, you can yen, then use the singular value, uh, which is just the uh, product of the two norms of the vectors involved in that update. You can use that to do dropping. This is very effective because you can control the number of non-zeros and in the sparse factors and basically generate a, a or use the equivalent sort of iteration with just a lower triangular or upper triangular matrix for the W factor. So you don't even need the full factorization, you can just use the upper or lower triangle. And what we found was that, and I apologize, the size of the fonts here isn't very good, but what we found, the slightly slower converging GM res here is using Gauss-Seidel, um, the faster convergence is with the A inverse smoother. And this is, again, from a problem from Nala Wind. Um, and it's just showing that if we can overcome the setup cost, this might actually be the better smoother uh, in the end. But uh, we still didn't drill down enough on the setup cost. And in the context of wind turbine simulations, setup is a, a real concern. Okay, well, to finish off, I'm basically run out of time. Um, we also think in certain circumstances we can go with uh, short, re short recurrence uh, Krylov methods. So by that I mean our, in particular, our momentum problem is quite close to a non to a symmetric problem, pardon me. Uh, it can be viewed as a perturbation of a symmetric matrix, and in fact, the, there are certain formulations of the overset grid method that our, our team are, are currently working on where we would have a symmetric matrix. So in that case, we could switch to MinRes, and that's again why Cassia and, and I were looking at this separately. We have a one sync version of MinRes, which also includes uh, reorthogonalization along the same lines as the CGS2 algorithm. So uh, going forward, we think we could effectively use MinRes to again reduce the time and for example, I've just done some experiments and found MinRes converges a little bit faster on, on the symmetric problems coming from Nalu Wind. So this is certainly of interest and we hope to pursue this going forward. So I'll stop there. I hope I haven't gone too much over time or close to the end, but we're working with many people in the audience to try and improve these simulations, get everything onto GPU. Rupang mentioned assembly. Uh, we're working closely with Livermore on uh, GPU assembly for this problem. Uh, we hope to have the smoothers uh, integrated with Hyper almost immediately. 
but also the same improvements in the Trilno stack. So Siva and uh, in particular and Brian and others are drilling down on the performance of the triangular solves and also the iterations um, to try and improve the performance. So hopefully in due course, you'll see further improvements uh, from both solver stacks. I'll stop there. Thanks. <laughs>